It's Friday! Welcome to another episode of the Tea and Trails podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to all our patrons and partners too. Who are these wonderful partners and what the hell is Patreon? To be honest, I don't really understand it at all as <laughs> Gary's side of the podcast. But what I do know is that people throw us a couple of quid each week to get this podcast into your ears. And I hope in return you enjoy our Twittering. Perhaps feel a little bit motivated. Perhaps even learn a little and definitely feel a whole lot of love. If you are a patron, you can also grab some discounts from Mountain Fuel, Outdoor Active, Vila Forte, Silver, Active Route, The Centurion Running Store, Protein Rebel, sportshoes.com wait for it wait for it big bobble hats look at oh, that look at that and x miles matt i realize that's terrible podcast content but i did just put on my big bobble hat massive thanks to all also pop over to summit crazy if you'd like to look as hard as gary in awesome tea and trails merch episode 25 i can't believe it two five we are we were never gonna flying. do this gary we were never gonna do this <laughs> and it's just snowballed <laughs> Yeah, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, this week we chat with Shelley Gordon. We bring you more tales from the trails and we share our weekly trials and tribulations. And we have a fantastic competition from our friends, Silver. Probably our biggest competition to date. So, yes, yeah, stay tuned for that. How are you doing, Eddie? Is it is it taper time? Sometimes I enjoy the taper. How are you doing in the taper? Yeah, I don't mind the taper so much. As I was saying to you, just a minute, I'm going to take the big bubble hat off because it's about 20 degrees outside, Overheat. and also I look like a clown. <laughs> um, uh, I haven't. Yeah, I don't really mind. Do, do you know? Honestly, I didn't really notice it last week. You know, when you're busy, you just fill the time. You just fill the time with other stuff. It's not like I get to lie around <laughs> watching selling something. You realise like all the things that you'd normally neglect. Yeah. Yeah, I need to catch up on things. So, um, I yeah, the taper is yeah, and perhaps I notice it more this week in the sort of three days before I travel. I get the just really start getting the jitters every morning. I'm like, oh my god, this time in three days, three days time, I'll be running a hundred miles. I think everyone's in a bit denied. Like like Bryn's like just not bothered. He, I think the spine has to, and all my mates are like, right, yeah. Off you go. Like, I think the spine has taken any, nothing I ever will do will be of any interest or any, like, they're just so nonplussed. The only people that really bother are the dogs because they're like, what the hell? Why are we not having 100 miles a week running? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I still had quite a good week last week. I did last long run. I think I'd spoken to you and had just done that and it did not feel good. I just felt tired. I had a massage and I don't know about you, but I, I don't think you never talk about having massages, but I have never. Never. Okay. I do have a massage about once every three weeks and I always, oh, I always look forward to it and then it's so painful. But the next day you always think you'll feel great, but actually you feel pretty rubbish because I guess someone's rummaged around yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are they supposed to be painful though? I, I, I have had a massage in the past and I don't remember it being painful. A sports massage or a special massage, Gary? Oh, both. <laughs> <laughs> They are like, like when they find knots, like so always like my IT bands, my calves, there's, I've got a re really good lady. She works at like the Commonwealth Games, the Olympics and stuff. Ooh. And um, so she knows, she literally like, she's so, she puts her hand, her hands on the leg and we'll go, oh, it's a bit tight in there before she's even like applied oh, pressure. I love and that. she chats, chat, 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 chats. She doesn't let up. All the time, like she calls her bitch fingers, gets her fingers in my like calf muscles. So, yeah, I guess the next day you're never going to, everything does feel a bit sore. But it's very important for me to have that because I do get tightness. And especially I think doing different sports, like when I'm doing a lot of skiing, the IT bands get really tight and the calves get really tight from all the climbing. I think of it as like a little treat to myself, but really there's nothing pleasurable about it apart from it's 90 minutes lying on sweating on um, a couch that nobody can um, contact me. And anyway, so yeah, I had that. So that did, yeah, I felt a bit rubbish. After that, I did my hill rep. I can't remember when I was thinking about them, whether I did five or six by five minutes. I just ran to the top of the hill, basically. But that felt hard. Um, enjoyed that a little bit. I had a little moment at the top when I thought I've used the same hill for those hill reps because it's in the middle of nowhere. It's on a track. So it's rocky, but it's like good, good. You can run the whole yeah. thing. 
it's some bits are still like it's lovely because some bits are like super steep and some bits it's like you get to the little bits where oh little five steps of like little <laughs> oh, and then we go back up again i love it also it's nowhere so i can just the dog's just free to roam i'm never gonna i know i mean i think the amount of time 12 weeks i've done those hill reps and i've met one person on the track so i can just i don't need to worry that oh, lindy's that. gonna take out a hiker's sandwich or anything yes yeah, so i got to the hill i was like my god i've done and i started those hill reps back when it was still there was still snow and i couldn't get up the hill and now yeah. it's like we're really in getting into summertime and now it's like god i've put some there's been some sweat on this hill well done i gave myself a little pat on the back well i saw done your instagram it. story it was good to look i've not missed a week of hill reps like i have consistently done those heinous 15 minutes i did do yeah i did do you remember i think i talked to you when i'd done six by 15 minutes oh my god <laughs> uh four by eight six by eight four by five um there's no science in what i choose to do it tends to be like just how I'm feeling um, <laughs> but yeah they've definitely made a bit those longer hill reps have definitely made a big difference to my aerobic fitness and the ability to then go slower and carry on jogging up a hill so I'm proud of myself for doing those and I'll go back to doing those again ready for Totret after Satan's Way they're really good and they're definitely helping Bryn too though I only gave him this week he only had five by three minutes uphill because um, he was like what should I do I was like just that's fine <laughs> just a little less this week yeah, let's, cut, let's cut you back a bit um, and then yesterday so Bryn went off to do his hill reps without the kids uh, yesterday and so I had the I was like this seems a bit skewed you've gone off um, and you're having a lovely run on Sunday morning without the kids and I've got all the kids on bikes trying to do my last five by three minutes. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't uh, appropriate. Are your plans perfect. pretty much mirroring each other then, yours and Bryn's? Uh, no, because he doesn't do, he only probably runs four times a week, three times a week with the, the amount he works and he plays football. But our main, I'll set him long hill reps he'll do and then he'll do one speedier session. But I tend to, he's got, he was a footballer by trade when he was younger. So his hamstrings are the tightest hamstrings in North Carolina. So I have to be really careful with him that I can't give him like, okay, five by three, two, one minutes because his hamstrings would just pop off. So all this session yeah. has to be like progressive 30, like you'll know, middle-aged men, progressive 30 minute warm up, And then <laughs> maybe does like five minutes, six minutes. If I give him anything shorter, one, he'll just go too fast and blow up. And two, there's always like slight injury prevention is always yeah. on, on his sessions. So um, yeah, anyway. Uh, so yeah, I went off yesterday thinking, hang on a sec, I've been scammed. You've gone off up the <laughs> hill. <laughs> I've got all the kids and... So we got, we like, I we cycled up, they cycled up two miles sort of up to where there's a little bit of flap and a bit of hill. I was like, you can, kids can sort of play around while I do my reps and then we'll go back home again. And uh, by the time we got up there, I was like, geez, it's taking us like 40 minutes just to all the chat and the stopping and the, yeah. the arguing about who overtook who. <laughs> <laughs> so I, just, I just left them. I was like, look, I'm got to get this run done. I'm just going. I just ran off up there. <laughs> and just left them in a field and when I came back there was just Evie playing in a puddle and the boys had just been terrible parenting boys had just disappeared and I said Eve's I've got one more to do she's like yeah that's okay I'm going down to the river I was like should I should I be more should I just let this she was fine uh kids are fine the boys had gone on a little bike ride there's nobody around yeah um, so we, yeah, I got it done. Felt pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Gap pace was pretty, pretty impressive there, <laughs> uh, Gary. And yeah, that was it then. And then I did think, oh, I did a couple of easy turbos as well on my bike just to keep the legs moving. So I didn't want to do any double run day. So it ended up being about 50 miles, 10,000 feet still seemed quite a lot, but about eight and a half hours of running. And as I've been averaging about 14 hours that sort of like percentage taper cutback is about right i don't really know um how i feel it's hard to know isn't it i when i hear people go i feel amazing i feel like so i'm like i don't think i felt amazing for 40 years <laughs> <laughs> i feel amazing actually at some point in the race never before the I'm, race 
Yeah. Okay. I'm glad to hear that because I was listening to podcasts and this guy was going, I felt amazing. I feel like I could win every single thing. I was like, geez, I've never, am I doing something wrong? Cause I've never, nearly always in the taper week, I feel pretty like the, the, the mind going when you, when you don't do as much running during a week as well, you, you feel so unathletic. Yeah. And well, I do. And uh, putting words into your mouth and I feel like I've lost, I can't, oh my God, I've lost all my, I don't feel fit. How am I going to even run a hundred miles? <laughs> my three best runs of the year have been all county tops, teenage with altitude, and the last leg on the hard moors relay. But everything else, if we go out for a run on a Sunday with a big group of people, I'm quite often Terrible. hanging off, hanging off the back, yeah. thinking, "What the hell?" I love that. Thank you so much. Because that's exactly <laughs> how I've been feeling since the spine. Hanging off Eddie, hanging off the back. That could be on my t-shirt. Um, so yeah, we, so we don't know. We're going into the unknown on the South Downs Way, like. I could be on fire or I could be terrible, but we don't know. I, I'm not injured. I'm fresh as I'm going to be. Everything's, I've got no excuses, Gary, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no sandbagging. <laughs> There's no sad. Yeah, I can't do it, Gary. I'll think of something this week. I'll develop some, some sad tumour on the side of my head or something. <laughs> anyway. What's the, I don't know anything about your week. I'm excited. What's Ooh, happening? Well, it's not so exciting, really. Um, yeah, I, but if I don't know anything, it normally means you're like, oh, I didn't. Oh, yeah. Well, no races. And I think um, I think I was like Icarus flying too close to flames. I did all company tops and then I rolled straight into the Harmore's relay. I never had a, a down week, so a few things happened. I just had a lot on my plate and with uh, the Harmos Relay, I just gave myself a bit of a down week and I didn't really do much. Oh my goodness, until Wednesday and the Strava lines were good. It was these just progressively going up and then a down and then a few weeks up and then a down. So that, that perfection. Yeah, yeah, that's the trend. So yeah, easy miles until Wednesday. Then I did this, uh, I like my little general aerobic runs, so the zone three with some hill sprints at the end. And now I'm really lucky, you know, I'm a mature male I don't suffer from like Achilles or hamstring or anything like that I could just have a warm up without any kind of dynamic um, drills or stretches and I could go and do 200s or 400s without any reaction so that's uh, yeah I'm pretty fortunate like that. but yeah we did that and then we went to the pub afterwards for our Thursday Thursday and we all relived our Ardmore's glory which was nice and I should have had my t-shirt or Neil was at his t-shirt on and I let the side down but that was good and then I did on uh, Saturday I did my it times by 800 and that was <laughs> it's kind of a bit of my midweek long run too i suppose but on a, on the weekend because all in all that run was about 13 miles and it's quite a generous rest in between so i had two minutes uh jog between because i suppose each effort would have been about three minutes for about 800 meters and some of those 800s were they're supposed to be 5k pace or effort but the terrain was such that some would have been um, 550s, 540 something, and then some would be pushing seven minutes. I think I'm in 20 minute 5k um, effort. So I use this da J Jack Daniels formula and it predicts all your different running paces. But yeah, I enjoyed it. And <laughs> it's quite funny. The very last rep, I ended up on the A1 motorway on the roundabout and there was no, there was a complete footpath around the uh, roundabout just outside of Bourbon. So I did my eight hundred, a couple of 800s on, on, on that footpath there, which would have been totally random. People would have been watching me running around this uh, busy roundabout on the, on the M1, A1. But yeah, that was good. And ran straight into the cinema and watched The Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. You know, I'm not going to know what that is. <laughs> it was very emotional, actually. I think I probably cried about half a dozen times. <laughs> <laughs> and I you smashed were, quite a few. You were tired. You'd done a long run. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I was very, very tired. I emotional. actually zoomed in on your Strava because you literally ran past all my old haunts, my first year student yeah, lodgings, yeah. the Dun Cow. You went past like the live. I was like, where's he gone? What road he's gone? Oh, he's gone along there. Oh, yeah, that's where I used to have my business <laughs> business management lectures. Never went to those. Uh, then you went past. Uh, I wonder if it's still called the New Inn. It was an It's a Scream pub. Do you remember those? Oh, used no. to get... <laughs> but somebody <laughs> will remember. It used to, you know the picture with the man going like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was, there was a chain of university pubs that 
when they were called it's it's a scream we used to say oh, and you wow. had a card and you got if you were a sports person you got like 20 why they were encouraging this i bet this doesn't happen now but you got 20 percent off like the food and drink there and i was like oh he's run past that oh and then Ooh. you went past where i lived in my first year okay and then i think the cinema i don't even remember a cinema being at durham 20 years ago there must have been oh, one yeah there would have been a real shabby one up on uh north road but it's moved into what used to be one of the shopping centers now it's all cinema and eat See, none eat. of that was there none of that was there we had claire's accessories and greg's and that was about it was oh god yeah greg's is uh greg's is still there <laughs> there's probably about 10 greg's in in durham what now was, what were you what were your cinema treats Oh, I had, uh, they called uh, b- bejazzles or jazzies. Not no, bejazzled. it's not bejazzles, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> jazzies, jazzies, that's it. Too. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jassies, the little the, the discs with the sprinkles on them, the little chocolate discs. <laughs> Not for Jazzle, but sick. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh that's, that's a sweet treat. That's I don't think I could eat more than one of those. Oh, I'd all back. Well, Lisa went to Beamish and brought a load of sweets back from Beamish for everybody. What else to do? Yeah, so moving on from Bejazzles. Uh through two <laughs> two strength sessions, one core, one full body. Me and George uh still smashing it on a Friday down the gym, and that's good. You know, it's funny. Um, you know, I said we have to pay now for George. Well, a different member of staff said we don't have to pay. So Oh. We are they still... listen to the podcast. Hopefully not, because I'll, <laughs> <laughs> they'll call me out next time. And then I made a few uh, Dragon's Back Race purchases. Oh. I bought the ground sheet, the classic Thermarest ground sheet, which is super popular. And useless. <laughs> <laughs> well, all, all, all mine is for, really, uh, because hopefully it'll be on like a grassy field. It won't be like you guys going and rocking up on a, on a rocky trail or something. But yeah, so I think it should be fine for that. And then I bought a Lomo camping mat, an inflatable one, which really, really cheap. And normally it's like, that's a red flag, buy cheap, end up buying twice. That's my history with cheap purchases. But I did say this on uh, Dragon's Back Race forums. So what, you sleep, you put that down and then you put your thermo rest over the top of that? No, that's thermo fine. rest on the ground and then this um, inflatable mat on top of Have you that. tried this combination yet? Because won't it like wobble off? Well, we'll try it this weekend, actually. I'm going to put it to the test this weekend. And all it's got to do is stay inflated for one night over six nights. And it's hopefully not going to be freezing cold too. So I got in this little rabbit hole of spine race kit. Hopefully it's not going to be as cold as spine race. So yeah, I need to rein in the kind of temperatures and stuff that I need for the Dragon's Back race. Yeah, all in all, pretty good week one quality session. I didn't do a long run, a couple of gym sessions, but like I say, a down week. So I will take it. It's, you know, it's so easy. You just want to do more, 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 more. And I just thought, no, be mature, be a mature athlete, because if you just do keep pushing and pushing and pushing, then something's going to give. And uh, hopefully... Have a good week this week off the back of that. This week we are joined by Shelley Gordon. Now, if you're a runner from my neck of the woods, uh, then Shelley will be very familiar face. She's gone past me quite a few times on various um, hard moors races. Yeah, loads are of hard Gary? Well done, Gary. You're doing your best. <laughs> Keep going. I, but yeah, loads, loads of hard moors victories under a belt. Now she's a retailer. She owns a running shop. Is in Great Aiden called Let's Run. Now, in 2018, Shelley's partner Tony took his own life, and we understand this could be a sensitive subject for some of our listeners. So, give it a miss, or maybe share it with someone who you think it could help. We are so happy to welcome Shelley Gordon to the podcast. It's been, I mean, I feel remiss that you've never been on the podcast as an absolute legend of our sport. Uh, where are you? What's the view from the, your window and have you been for a run today? So I'm at home with my three-year-old grandson, Colby. The view I can see out the window is the Cleveland Hills, which is perfect. <laughs> And because I've got Colby and I had him last night, so I'll have not been for a run yet. So I'll go tonight once he's gone back home. Shelley, you don't look old enough to have a grandson. <laughs> this is terrifying. <laughs> um, because you look like you're about 21. Is, have you got a heavy <laughs> Zoom filter on? <laughs> oh, Eddie. <laughs> Running, give it to you. 
<laughs> where would you run be Shelley you got anything planned tonight a session you're going to do like eight times three minutes or yeah, I think I'll just go for a run with the dogs no no pressure just a nice relaxed run well I'm saying a nice relaxed run I run with five dogs so it's not generally relaxing oh, <laughs> but... oh, right nice. before you get on to the next question Gary let's just dissect that five <laughs> dogs talk me through what, so have, what, what, I, have, what dogs? I have six dogs but one of them 16 so he He's properly retired, just generally chills out on the sofa. Then I have another five dogs, but depending on the distance, depends on whether they run or not run with me. So Let's talk about the like lead situation. Yeah, they're on a leash or they're just free. <laughs> well, if I drive straight up to Captain Cook's, then I can just not bother with the leads. And then they just all go crazy for the first five minutes. And then they literally just go into file and run. So they're generally pretty good. Very good. What sort of breeds are they, Shelley? Um, well, I look like a dog walker, so there's no consistency in any of the breeds. So Blue's the old boy. He's a lab lurch across, so he doesn't run at all anymore, but he's done the whole Cleveland way. He's done everything with me. Oh. Then Ren's the shop dog. She's um, a spaniel. She's like golden child, apart from when you're... <laughs> she's golden child all the time. <laughs> then I've got Raven, the German shepherd. She's my daughter's dog, really, but she's 17 and away at college at the moment, so... And she's, she lives at home all the time anyway, so I generally have her out running. Willow's a tricolored border collie. Um, and I have two Chalkies, brother and sister Chalkies. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and what's the, like, living arrangements? Are they free-roaming around the house, or do you have, like, um, a general? I'd, I'd like to say they're all barred from upstairs, but... The, the little dogs, Bramble especially is Isla's, so he's Isla's as well. Um, he sleeps on her bed every night in a pink unicorn bed on her bed. And oh, he likes to have a blanket tucked around him as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I always wish Rex was allowed up on the bed, but no, no. it's a hard no. It's a no. hard no from us. None of, them are allowed in, none of them are allowed in my bed, but in, they sleep on her bed. And only the little ones, so none of the other dogs go upstairs. Yeah, the Alsatian on the bed, might that would be that's quite a big, <laughs> yeah. quite a big air fellow. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get back on track. Could you share with us a bit about you and uh, your background as a runner? I kind of know quite a lot of it. We probably, you probably went past me quite a few times on the Cleveland Way over the years. But yeah, for our yeah. listeners who don't know who you are, yeah, share a bit about you. That'd be great, Shelley. Okay, so I started running a long time ago. I moved to the northeast of England from Cambridge. Um, and when we moved up here, we joined long distance walkers. So, and at the time, there weren't so many running events unless there were road races. It was all LDWA and you entered as a winner. Um, my sister, my mum, my stepdad, we were all like helping out all the races. My stepdad ran a lot. When I was, yeah, it's about 10, yeah, 10 months I was when I moved from Cambridge and then discovered the hills and absolutely loved it. And then ran and then cross country. I came third from last in the school cross country and I thought I was a really good runner until that point. Not that oh. I didn't complain or anything, I just thought I was a good runner. And um, so I joined running club as a result of that. <laughs> did you? It sort of inspired you, did it? Yeah, yeah. totally. I couldn't believe yeah. that I was so far behind. It was awful. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that joined me running club and then tried by my stepdad, or ex stepdad as he is now. He entered me in a 25 mile race when I was 13. So I a did 25 that. mile race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when I was 13. So, and I came third lady. So I went from third from last to third lady. And I got a lot of attention and loved it. And then obviously that just helped keep you going after that and you don't have any concept of how far anywhere is do you when you're that age did you do any training for that or did he just no, like no we literally walked up I think I'd done about four or five miles was probably the furthest I'd done prior to that and did he run it with you or did he just like go yeah, here's yeah. Your... yeah okay yeah, he right. didn't just go yeah, here's your bib yeah, in a few hours <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you'd even be allowed to enter a race these days, that kind of distance at that age. Yeah, well, it's a scouts event. So, ah, it was, okay. and there was walkers, runners, and you just pretty much did your own thing. So, we just ran and walked around. And then the next year, trained for it and got an hour quicker <gasps> at the time. Oh, so, then, so, yeah, so that was, that was pretty much it then from 13 onwards. Then I was training properly. So, well, I'm saying properly, but <laughs> more than three miles. <laughs> And was it always, have you always preferred the trails over the road? 
Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, yeah, so I've done a couple of half marathons on the road, but a few 10Ks, odd ones, but nothing major. I like hills and scenery and things to look at. It's all about the journey, isn't it? Yeah. That, and it. so was it your love of running? Um, you own the shop, let's run, let's run.co.uk. Yeah. Um, d- is that where you've, excuse my ignorance, but is that what you've d- done right from the beginning or did you have another career before you became? A- I say, um, I went to university, did a psychology degree, got pregnant with my son in my first year of my degree, had him at the end of my first year, so I didn't miss any time. Um, Lovely. Still, ran, still ran. When I finished, I couldn't get a job and I was applying for all sorts of things and I found it really difficult to find a job. And then I applied for the police. So I did 16 years policing and wow. then and left as a sergeant on dog section. I but see. I I see. This is, this is, did you, were you, is that the path where you followed all the way through your police career? Was it dog handling? No, I did the last five years was on dog. Dogs. I did a year in custody. I uh, did well. I always call it the riot van because then people sort of know what it is. So they're all in the shell. You it. want tough ass, <laughs> lady? Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so did all sorts of stuff like that, which is really good. <laughs> was was the dog handling always the dream? Were you like, this is where yeah. I want to go? Yeah. yeah, definitely. Is that quite a hard unit to get into? Is that quite popular? Yeah, people? Oh, yeah. really difficult. And especially I was Cleveland and then there was one female handler on the team when I started and, then, and that was it. There'd never been a female supervisor. They'd never... Yeah, there weren't many women on the team at all. They'd yeah. never met a Shelley before she appeared <laughs> on the team. Can I ask a question about this? It's totally off the, off the running contest. So, but when you work with the dogs, is the dog yours that you have yeah. to live with you? How yeah. does that relationship work? Yeah, so you train together, so you qualify as a team. So even if the dog's been qualified with the, previously with a different handler, then you still have to do a training course together. So that you qualify as that team as a licensed team and you just have one dog or is it a couple um, of dogs all the all the handlers have two well most of them have two i had one where do the dogs come from like is it a special place you go for police um, dogs or is it from the bread and then there's just like contacts really lots of different breeders around the country and then some might come from a different police force and change about if dog's not getting on particularly well with the handler or if it doesn't like women or it doesn't particularly like a male yeah. handler and then somebody else is wanting one. We nearly had a spaniel instead of Rex. Um, when we went to rescue Rex from the Dogs Trust, uh, the dog that we had our eye on, he's not listening, don't want <laughs> to upset Rex. <laughs> but yeah, we saw the spaniel and it was amazing. But then the police police had him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we're a little bit crazy as well. They're probably better working and living yeah, in the Yeah, so do, do you train your dogs now? Are they like trained to <laughs> police dog Attack. standards? Um, I wasn't going to say like, trained would... to <laughs> I would like to say they're really well trained. Um, So Ren comes to the shop with me, Golden Child Spaniel. She comes to the shop every day with Ray and she makes me look really good because she's so chilled out and looks really well behaved. And well, she is really well behaved. But then the others, um, yeah, not as well behaved. (laughs) There's a bit of a pack mentality there, too. Five. One just has to start the bad behaviour. Just like kids, <laughs> just like kids. So then how did you become to, you're obviously running through all this time. What then, how did the shop come about from um, from being in the police force? Um, it's always been like a bit of a dream of mine because um, I'd run for so long and there weren't, there never even seemed to be many women. Like when you went to the, all the races, there were never any women. You never queued for the toilet. And then I remember going with my son who was probably about my grandson's age now Um to get some shoes and we're over in the Lake District and the shop assistant was just really quite off-putting and spoke to me as if I didn't have a clue and yeah I was early 20s I was, I was probably I was 23 I think and um and he just spoke to me as if I just didn't have a clue about running or never ran anything and then Joel, my son, he was like messing about with things. I was putting things back, but like three-year-olds do, interested in things. And he was a bit grumpy about that as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. One day I'm going to have a running shop. It's going to be child-friendly, dog-friendly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not going to be a scary place. And so that women or anyone that's taking up running and 
because a lot of people will come in and the first thing they'll say is, I'm not a proper runner. Oh, I've only just started yeah. running. Oh, and like lots of, I don't know, they just don't want to have any expectations of them. And I just don't want it to be a scary place. So that's what my shop's like. <laughs> I love that. And it must be so lovely, especially if you're a woman, you've just started running, you don't know what you're looking for, but you've been sort of pointing in your direction and you walk in and then Shelly, not only the dog, but Shelly's there too going, <laughs> this, is a, this is a safe place where you can yeah. come and ask all sorts of questions. And because yeah. you do feel a bit, you know, lots of people, you know, it does feel a bit daunting. Like what, on, especially, Especially now with the market of shoes out there, not just any sort of, not just running kit, but shoes, like people don't know where to start now because every brand has about 20 different models. And yes. it's like, we, <laughs> gosh, you must be an absolute font of knowledge for people that come and don't know where to start. I just think it should be a lovely, safe and a nice environment to be in. A, a shoe shop, there's nowhere I'd want to go in and feel intimidated in a, in, in, well, in a, in a I remember shop. as well when I used to go into a shop to buy shoes that, that, that it, or it was run by like a teenager who didn't have a clue and I'd be like look I know what I'm looking for but can you point me in the right direction and he'd be like oh, I don't know it's my Saturday <laughs> job you know I'm just here for the chicks <laughs> I have four Saturday boys and all of them are absolutely brilliant oh. I get really really good feedback about them for how knowledgeable they are and yeah they're brilliant and am I right in thinking you started the shop that was uh, yours and Tony's first, I suppose, kind of business yeah. Yeah. business venture? And I, I knew Tony, I think everybody in the Northeast, to be honest, knew Tony. <laughs> it was everybody's, I think I probably had a few hugs from him over the years. I think I've met him in Northumberland, Hardmores, popped up in the Lake District and um, yeah, London Marathon too, I think it's safe to say. He loved running. How did yeah, how did you and Tony meet? Yeah, so I met Tony at the end of one of the hard marks races and then he put a little team together, his ultra runner team and it was Kim, Cavill, Kim and Jason, me, yeah. um, Steph, Scott, I want to say Steph Scott, could be wrong on the surname. Um, a guy called Charlie. There's like a few of us anyway that he put together on the team. So he, he got us a bit of kit and then we'd ring him if we wanted anything or email and generally if he wanted anything. And he'd start it out. And then we actually got together at Kim and Jason's wedding. Okay. <laughs> 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 Nothing like a win to get people together. Yeah, so we'd, we'd known each other for a couple of years, probably prior to that. But I didn't see a lot of him. I'd, I'd see him at the races and things. That was about it. Um, yeah, and then we got together at a wedding. It looks like that was potentially the start of a lovely chapter in your life. But then you know, re re rewind. Sorry, twenty eighteen took his own life. Yeah. Did you? Did you have any conversations or did you have any signs that, that what was going through Tony's Tony's mind? No, absolutely nothing at all. L literally had no idea. I picked him up from the watching the, the England game the night before. Okay. Uh, he'd gone to a different pub. I didn't have a signal. He'd send him, it's, I thought he was at a pub in Stokesley. He ended up being at a pub in another village. So we're outside the pub in Stokesley waiting to pick him up, my daughter and I. And then we found out he was at this other one. So we drive, found him, walking back on the road, pick him up. I had a bit of an argument. Yes. Um, he was a little bit drunk. And um, and I think he thought I was lost because he was in a different place, but I wasn't. Um, are you singing for me? Thanks, Colby. <laughs> um, yeah, and then when we got home, he we had a camper van. He went and got in a camper van. Me and my daughter went to bed. It was late, school night. She was 12, 11 or 12. Um, and next morning, I found him. Oh yeah, I found that he died. And that was literally it. I had no inkling, no idea whatsoever it was coming. And then what happens next? You know, you, you've you got a, a police background, obviously, but then you're a civilian at that time. What happens? I'd only been left the police um, just under a year when that happened. Yeah. So, I don't know, it was... Quite, quite surreal. Um, I'd got up in the morning and we had we've got horses. I'd gone and got horses in, let the dogs out. He hadn't got in. I thought, oh, he's just hiding out the way from from me and I, because he knows we're going to take the mick out of him for yeah. being drunk and acting daft. Yeah. And I'd taken Isla to school, came home. He hadn't come in the house because I'd left the door wide open. I thought I would just be in the house making a cup of tea. He wasn't. It was actually, it was a Thursday morning. It was my lady's one group day. And he hadn't come in. And I thought, oh, I better go and check. Because I thought, is he actually going to open the shop this morning? And if not, I need to go in. So yeah. that's when I found him. Literally just found him there. And I had no idea at all. Yeah. So just literally ringing police. And then it's, it's the scene. And then I'd cut him down. Then they're telling me to do CPR. 
it was way too late for CPR. Um, yeah. It's I just, bet it just seemed, seemed completely just a, a surreal situation to be involved yeah. in. Yeah, not real. Absolutely. And it's like bright sunshine, all the traffic's going past, and it's just yeah. like a normal day for everyone else. And then it was like paramedics turning up, police, everybody. And then that was pretty much it. And yeah. then I had a probationer no, no way. Okay. Yeah, take my statement. But I thought, what a rubbish job for her. Like, I'm an ex-police yeah. officer, ex-police sergeant. She's there with a, a tutor. So I was just trying to make it everything as easy as oh, possible for her as well. Because <laughs> I thought, I know what it's like being on the other side of that table yeah. and having yeah. to do God. that. And That's amazing that you could feel like that. When you when you look back at now, you've obviously you've spoken quite openly about this yeah. um, this sort of period in your life. We've did some other podcasts you've been on, and you've done a lot to raise awareness and and money as well. When you look back now, I know you said, "Oh, I didn't see any signs." Do, do uh, and but you sort of know the signs now that you should look yeah. for. When you look back That's now, do you not. still? Some people just hide it so well, and particularly yeah. Yeah, and it's just not talked about. So for Tony, I don't know whether he's been struggling a long time, or whether he hadn't, or whether it was the drink as well. Having had a drink, whether that mm-hmm. was just that Dutch courage to follow something through that he maybe had already been thinking about. I don't know. Yeah, and that's that, that's the biggest. Gary and I were talking about that before you jumped on the call. That was like. It's sort of easier for women, isn't it? In some ways, our, I think because we our emotions maybe are a bit more up and down as well. We're yeah. kind of used to like that monthly high and low. And, <laughs> and I think the conversations we have with our girlfriends as well, we there's a lot more, we share a lot more, we moan a lot more and we're not afraid to sort of show how I feel. Whereas I think with men, they're kind of like, then just maybe not used to that emotional, the hormonal, maybe the highs and lows as well. So what would you say, perhaps if anyone's running along and listening to this podcast, man or woman, like, what would you say is like a bit of advice or help that um, might be, maybe they're struggling to connect with the way they're feeling or they know somebody who they think, yeah, I'm not sure that you're quite right. And if you know, so if you're worrying about somebody, I would always, or if you just think maybe, just check in, just send a text message. And if they haven't replied, because some people send a text message, they haven't replied, and that's sort of it, isn't it? And then send another one. Don't don't just leave it at that. Or go because if if somebody is actually at that stage of thinking about it, that text message might just be the th- that thing that stops them in the tracks isn't it and then if you're the one that's maybe contemplating that or thinking it try and see past there is a future whether you think there is or not or whether you think you're not part of this future anymore you absolutely are and it it passes and it can change it doesn't mean you're not going to feel that way again but you're here for another day you're here for maybe another two days and you maybe get that extra help that you need in that time and then that's it your life's changed doesn't it yeah you're always wanted it's a bit like I know this seems it might seem a bit wrong to uh, relate it to an ultra race but I think like there's always a way however bad you feel you, there's yeah. always a, you're always you're going to feel better just keep going yeah. just keep yeah. going forward it's the highs and isn't it it's the high, yeah. you, you feel great one minute and then you feel rock bottom the next minute don't you but you know it's going to pass after Tony I had um, quite a bad spell um, well it was about two years after Tony actually I had a really really bad spell just things happening with family and, and all sorts of things and the shop and everything else and I got to the point that I wouldn't go to Saltburn Cliffs. So my lady's running group, they said about going to Saltburn this week. And I was like, no, I don't trust myself not to go off the cliffs if we do. So we're not we're not going there. And all of them just checked in with me and yeah, it got me through. And now like three years later, four years later, I can't believe I actually ever felt that low. Yeah. You can, you can do. And you, and everybody as well. I always thought, oh, that I'd never feel like that. Wouldn't happen to me. I'm an ex space officer. I'm tough. I've gone through huge amounts of different things, all the stuff with Tony. And I thought, you just think you're invincible. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You're not invincible. And and you don't know what's around the corner in your life that may, might make you the subject of that next time. And you might you might be the one saving somebody but you also might be the one that needs saving one day as well yeah the running community can be such an asset because your little group all of us have that little niche of like good running mates that we go running training and they probably know more about you and just by spending those hours together don't you and 
yeah. proud of you for saying like, yeah, guys, no, not feeling good. <laughs> but you yeah. say like, if that was flipped, like my running group, full of probably seven or eight middle-aged men, uh, yeah, I we don't really have those com- conversations. So that whole kind of imbalance between men and women, yeah, I can just, in my own little one-in-one uh, situation, it, it, it doesn't play out like that. We do not communicate like that. And what is a real worry is when you get to a point where you visualise in life that it's better without you there for everybody else, but like you said, it passes and... To get that point across, there's no scenario where you not being around is better for your loved ones. It's uh, Yeah, there's definitely uh, no chance. And having gone through suicide and gone through all of that aftermath, God, it just goes on forever. It absolutely goes on forever. And, well, all sorts, like debt, everything. Um, Nobody knows how expensive funerals are. That was an absolute fortune that I didn't have credit cards yeah. to pay for things like that. It was just, yeah. So even if you're thinking of doing that, like don't, don't put your family through it. Else. No. <laughs> yeah, I love that honestly. So what did yeah? What did the sort of six months post Tony's death look like for you? Um, the six months after included the spine. I think was yeah, it that's what yeah. I was. That was, that was it. Yeah, I did so. So, so tell us, tell us about that. What? How did? Yes. Well, it was just like that. Six months after, it was just I had to open the shop the next day. So I found him Thursday. I opened the shop Friday because I wasn't a police officer anymore. I didn't have an income. So if the shop wasn't open, there was no income coming in. Yeah. So things like that. And then people that didn't know me or didn't know what had happened and yeah. I had a couple of odd complaints and things. And then I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I'm really sorry that my partner died just today. And it's just, and then you were just like up and down. And like one minute I was like laughing about something and the next minute I like hysterical crying. And it's yeah. just, yeah, bloody awful. And then it was summer holidays. So it was all of the normal activities, kids, horses, Isla competing, doing different things, trying to keep things normal for her. And then Tony had put me in for the spine. He'd done the initial ballot thing. So he'd done that about a month or so before he died. So he did it in a little, um, I got up this morning to find he'd sent um, a message to me, Kelly Morgan and Jim Mann. So I went to Shelley in the spine. (laughs) Was it it something that you wanted to do or was it something you'd go on? I I wasn't planning on doing it then. Um, It was obviously on the radar, but not just I wasn't planning it then. Anyway, he hadn't paid for it. So then in September, was it the end of September? One of my police dog handlers, because I was part of a collaboration with the dog section, so there was three forces. So one of my staff, one of my North Yorkshire handlers, he took his own life but I'd only spoken to him the week before. And when he rang me, I got very intuition, I suppose. A bit, of, yeah, when people were ringing me, I was thinking there's something else going on here because so many people contacted me afterwards and I, there's something going on. So when I got this missed call, I rang him straight back and said, right, is everything all right? And he was like, oh yeah, yeah, just, just gonna let you know somebody else is somebody else that we knew had died, didn't know whether you'd been made aware. And I remember hanging up the phone call thinking, oh, it wasn't what I thought it was. And that was the Wednesday and he died the following Sunday. So anyway, so then he died and then somebody else, I'd met a lady in the shop. She runs Headlight Project now, which is local to us, but she's done huge inroads with suicide. Her husband died of suicide as well and I met her in the shop. So I just thought, and she was left with three children. And I think all these, and my handler, he had a six month old baby at the time. Oh. And so there was, it was just like such a massive impact. And I was like, right, enough's enough. I need to do something and I need to raise some money and awareness. A lot of it I wanted to do was as awareness of it. It wasn't even yeah. the money side of it, but then that helps fund raising awareness as well, doesn't it? So I was like, right. So I contacted them and said, I hadn't paid for anything else. Can I still have a place and and send money across? And they said, yeah, fine. So I literally did about three months training plan. <laughs> How would you train for that? Because obviously full time in the shop, oh, juggling nightmare. everything. Yeah. Yeah, total nightmare. I was just up and out the door really early in the morning, left Isla in bed, making it back in time to give her a breakfast, do her hair and get her to school. Wow. Was like every morning. Yeah, I'm raiding the shop for Kit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need this. <laughs> yeah, I was working really, really long hours and like training really hard in the morning and then still trying to do all the horse stuff. And I had three horses at the time and it was just bedlam. Absolute bedlam. 
So actually getting out of the spa and it was like, wow, this is like peaceful. <laughs> where did where did the film idea come from? Um, so that was actually Lee's idea. Uh, well, no, Vita's idea. So Sida, as of Simona now, owns Vita Running. So she's had quite a lot of her own problems and a lot of mental health and things as well. So she put in half of the money for the film to be made. Katula, Injinji, An Ultimate Direction put the other half in between them. Yeah, so they said for the film to be made, got permission to meet at certain points and and the film crew, um, absolutely amazing. So I met them again, Phil, um, I've just forgotten what the company's called. It'll come back to me. Um, anyway, so I saw, I saw him at the, the run show and he said that the film's changed his life. Oh, so, oh my gosh. This, now, is, this is the guy that made made the film. Yeah, yeah. so when I saw him at the run show, he said that it's t- it, the film's changed his life and changed the path of their company and oh, they're yeah. doing a lot of films along oh. with my sort of. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just getting it up to see what's the name, the run show. And how was that time during the race? I know it's such a long race. And for someone like me, I'd enter a race like that. And I'd be looking forward to that alone time. It's such a treat from the, the, just the oh, daily God. hustle and the daily noise. But then you're completely there on your own thoughts and a lot of, a lot of the kind of motivation that you find yourself doing the spine race is, I suppose, from Tony and trying to spread awareness. How, how was that for you? Was that a struggle or was it? It was the first time I'd been on my own since Tony had died, really. Um, and then having such a long time on your own as well, you go through a lot of thought process. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on. But I think it hit me more once I got into Northumberland as well because Tony was from Northumberland. Yeah. And then I was on my own from... Bellingham all the way to the finish. So that was a tough. Yeah, I had an awful night over the tube. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. horrendous. Yeah. And, um, if you haven't, if you haven't seen Shelley's film, oh my gosh! Well, take some tissues and go and watch it because it's absolutely amazing. And I, I watched it before I did the spine, and I watched the bit clip of you in Bellingham, or is it Burness where you are? The last bit where they film you inside, and you're like sitting there. Yeah. It's in Bellingham, yeah. and you're sitting there in all these like covered in blankets and there's med and everyone and because like you're at the, the women you know you're because you're one of the first women as well as quite a lot of tension around it. I remember thinking I am not going to get myself in that state in the spine <laughs> Shelly come on pull yourself together why she looks terrible and then I think oh my god I think I looked worse than Shelly when I was <laughs> you look like it's exactly how you should look in the spine. You are <laughs> destroyed and you've still got like a really tough section to do. It's You're totally raw. It's an amazing bit of... I can see why that film did change um, his life because yeah. it is proper and you're so good on it because it's just... You're just like... I yeah. don't know. Can I? I don't know if I can do this. But you're still smiling in it as well. When my daughter saw it, she was saying to me, "You yeah. look awful." <laughs> <laughs> I look my kids, kids, but my kids were quite scared about how I looked like yeah. at the finish. <laughs> yeah, they were like, "That's not mum. Like what? You look like a monster." But it is an incredible. Gosh, it's out there forever. What is an incredible? But I don't think it's probably been seen by enough people either. But it is an incredible piece. Of, yeah, we'll pop the um, link in the uh, yeah, show we'll notes. Yeah, pop the link and watch it if you want to see what you did. Gosh, you did. You did they did do an amazing amazing job with the film, didn't they? I, I yeah. look at it; it doesn't feel like me. I just, it, it is just an amazing, like put together film, isn't it? Yeah, it is amazing. And it just, it captures not only like the spirit of the race and how, you know, a lot of the social media around the the spine race, I don't think people realize how horrendous it is. Like, because they sort of make it look like, yeah, it's tough, but people are out there being like really super tough. But like the, the footage that they get of you, not like they sort of get the great mix of like, the scenery and the really great bits, like the bit over hike up Nick, it's just incredible. But then they also show like what it takes for you to do it. And you must be, yeah, I would, so proud of that and Tony would just be so proud of like what you did to that's yourself. What that's what I was saying to him. <laughs> you better be bloody proud of me. <laughs> You put me through this. <laughs> but what's amazing is emotionally you kept it together because I know how deep you have to go to do something like that. Like 
it must have felt so raw at some points that you just would have yeah. wanted to lie down and go uh, like I did. over the tube yes I kept sitting down and then I was doing maybe like, it probably was only about 100 meters and I'd and I'd say oh, I'm so tired I'm so exhausted and I'd sit down and I'd say no I'm gonna die if I stay here I need to get up I need to get up and I was just like trying to think of Tony and trying to think of right like you try and help me <laughs> Yeah, 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 <laughs> sure. to the next yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. I bet he was though. I bet he was. He was looking down, going, bit awkward this Shelley. Sorry, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you'd ever go back? Um, I would like to go back without all the, the pressure and build up that I had to it. It was just horrendous. And I didn't get out on the roads much. I did an, a 30 mile section with Carol. I did. Um, from a horse, I did like an out and back there, and that was about it. And I never got out on the rest of the course at all. And training wise, I think I'd have liked to have done more than I actually did. So, but most of it's in the dark anyway. So it's... yeah, but now, <laughs> but, and now I know how awful it is. Now I'm like, oh god, <laughs> that's probably better off going in blind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I I knew half of the course and the bit I didn't know, I can't remember it anywhere. I was just saying to you, I can't remember the check. I can't remember. It's like childbirth, isn't it? Yeah. It's better to go in not I, knowing what's I struggle happen, with comprehending the, the, the pace because I just say, I've only ever, I've never, I've never done a 200, say hard was 200, but I've done a 100 miler, roughly 24 hours if, you know, things go well. But then for another 100 miles plus a bit more, is it 260 something in total? How does that then turn into a week? I can't get my head around how that. I, I don't think I can either because I've done the Hard Moss 200. So I've done it 2017, the first one yeah. I did. So I was thinking, well, that was 52 hours, 52 and a half hours. <laughs> how did I go from 52 and a half hours to 128 hours? Yeah, I don't understand it either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it just dissipates. The time just goes, though, like all these things, doesn't it? It's like you lose comprehension of time yeah. and distance and everything. <laughs> Um, let's let's get let's just quickly tap back as we finish this off. What um, the reason behind your spine? What where can people go if they're listening to this? Um, where are the sort of good places that if you've learned in your experience that if people perhaps don't have anyone to talk to or don't know how to, where can they go for some help or some um, support? There's loads of online places to go to if you're not comfortable speaking to somebody on the phone. There's like online chat ones. All the research that I did was for. Well, all the charity stuff I did was for Calm because it was for men. It was meant a campaign against living miserably. So that's what I'd used. But um, recently some friends, they lost their son um, to suicide. So they've done quite a lot for the Paprius Paprius one. So that's the younger one. I think it probably depends on your age as well as to whether who you'd want to engage with and whether you'd want to engage by email, internet, phone. I think some of that yeah. generation yeah. wise as well, isn't it? But you just need to speak to somebody and once you've started talking, that's it. You've you've you're on the right you're on the right path, aren't you? And and a lot of these I'm guessing most people listening is going are gonna be runners, aren't they? And if you're in a club <laughs> or you're in hard malls or you're entering races or you're doing anything like that, talk yeah. to people at the races. Chat to people and Everyone knows somebody that's died of suicide now, I think. And perhaps it doesn't need to be a big sentence. It doesn't need to be no, anything apart from, I just, I don't feel right. Yeah. I don't feel, I don't feel myself. Yeah. Just that. And then, um, and again, if maybe if somebody tells you that as well, you don't, you're not, don't feel then I've got to heal this person. No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> you know, no. like perhaps as well, if that somebody says to you, don't feel right, then perhaps go to one of these yeah. charities now and go. To those. And then definitely like booking with your doctors because everyone's keen to get the broken legs fixed, aren't they? And plantar fasciitis and piriformis yeah. and everything. Everyone's keen to get all those fixed, but it applies to your head as well. And yeah. it's yeah. the main part that's controlling the rest of your body. And if you want to be able to run you need your head right probably that's why people don't communicate because unlike an injury like that we can it's like a tangible injury like say like say shin splints yeah. or something maybe there's a stigma around talking about mental health yeah, and um but everyone's got mental health whether it's good or bad it's just like how it is and that's yeah. never going to stay stable it's always going to adjust depending yeah. what's going on in your life in your work in your relationships or and things and you can get to what bottom but you can come back again oh, i know quite a few runners who maybe have battled with certain things and I yeah. wonder if runners are quite disproportionately uh struggling with mental health I think it attracts it attracts that ultra running community I think attracts people that 
Well, it's it's a very good. It's an addiction, isn't it? You replace yeah. an addiction yeah. sometimes with running. Yeah, like a bit of a self hurt thing as well, isn't it? Self harm sort of thing, isn't it? Punishing yeah. your body and putting yourself through that. But it takes an enormous amount of mental strength as well, yeah. and I think for anybody who's feeling that low and perhaps suicidal, the the actual mental strength to go through with something like that is yeah. huge as well. And so, like, there's a lot of yeah. similarities, isn't there? Like, yeah. and how low we can get yeah. a two hundred miler. The but any of those races you really dig very deep into your uh into your soul and it sounds oh, a bit over dramatic yeah. doesn't no, it, is it? <laughs> you 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 come face to face with yourself quite a few times on an ultra run don't you and i think that takes a certain sort of person that wants to do that as well we don't all want to go that deep into our personalities because sometimes it's a bit <laughs> of a funky base to be um what let's move on. what are you uh what are your plans for this year Shelley? Um, got a big race well I haven't, I haven't raced since the spine i was quite broken after it and i think i was physically and emotionally and then covid hit well i ended up um, Fell over and I fell. I've done some of the local fell races. Fell over and I fell race. Got infected. Got operated on. Then that took us into COVID. And then coming out of COVID and the side of the business was all really stressful and things. And then I've moved business premises only beginning of the year, six months ago. So I've had all of that going on too. And it's just really time consuming. But I think I've been yeah. making excuses yeah. as well. So I need to. I need to get my hat together. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of thing? What sort of thing do you think is on your well, radar? I've still got Lakeland Hundred. Still, um, I still haven't finished it. So I DNF. Come on, um, Shelley. Yeah. Do the hundred. Yeah. Well, me, well, me and Tony both DNF. He was doing the fifty. DNF at fifty miles. I DNF at Dale Main. But I've been sick all night. I couldn't work out what was going on. I've done ultras since I was fifteen. Yeah. Uh, so I just didn't know what was going on. Anyway, we were drinking the camper van water and made ourselves poorly. And then the following year, I was in for it, but that was Tony's funeral weekend was the day of Lake Killer's 100 start. Yeah. So, oh, so it seems like it's a good race to go back yeah, to. Yeah, so I am, I am actually in it for this year. <sighs> but... Clock's ticking, um, you've been seven weeks, Shelley. I know. So I'm, on time, a, I'm on a couch to a... 100 mile training plan. Do it! <laughs> yes! You've got years of endurance behind you. You'll be absolutely fine. I think if, if I manage to finish it, I'm not going to look pretty and I'm not going to be walking for a good few weeks afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you are going to look pretty because you're gorgeous. They so don't need to worry about that. But the walking bit, yes, you're going to smash yeah, it out. Yeah, I did but... the recce last year. Um, so I was in the shop all day, then home, up for three o'clock in the morning, put the horses out, put the dogs out in the kennels, drove to um, Buttermere, then yeah. bust everything out and ran back, got home, and I couldn't get out of the car. <laughs> I had a pizza, half a glass of wine, and was asleep. <laughs> Yeah. That's the way it should be. I think you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Nothing will be as bad as Achievements ever in your life. Yes, I, I actually agree. I don't know, Jacob's Ladder at the end of the hundreds, pretty... No, no, shut up. <laughs> you don't know, Gary. You're not in this club. You don't Fair know. Enough, yeah. you know. I will never be in that club either. <laughs> So. And talking about clubs, one last thing uh, we just want to quickly ask about is the Let's Run round, yeah. which Gary has done I know. a couple of weeks ago. Did you get yeah, a few it? weeks ago, me and Aaron did it. Um, but I've not validated it yet, Shelley, so I've not got the elusive uh, Swan badge. Yeah, what do we do? How, how do we, I suppose, explain a bit about the route and how do people get the badge? Okay, so it goes from the shop, takes in the local landmarks for this area. So we did it as if you were visiting the area and you've not been here before so a lot of it some of it well a lot of it most people have done if you've done the Cleveland Way you've done quite a bit of it so half of it's pretty much Cleveland Way and then it comes off but it diverts to a few different trip points as well that were nice viewing yeah. points and then you take a selfie outside the shop if we're open come back in afterwards you get your name on the leaderboard and get a badge and how do you find the route oh, it's on Strava and I'm all rubbish with stuff like that so I think it's on as um, like as an event recurring event but it's just to keep it at the top there so but you can just go on anytime you like and do it I've got the yeah. GPX good, hit me up if you need good it good loop Gary would you recommend it yeah I'm, I think I'm going to do it again soon actually because when I was sitting in the uh, podcast earlier I'm trying to look at 
basically long runs ahead of uh, Lakeland Hundreds without traveling to the lakes because that takes a long time and you drive back and it's crippling as you're trying to get out the car. So <laughs> I thought, yeah, let's do the, um, let's run around. But last time I did it with Aaron and um, Aaron, I'm going to throw him under a bus here. We walked the last five miles, <laughs> four, maybe four miles. <laughs> and it wasn't me that wanted to walk. That's all I'll say. So maybe. Oh, jeez, judgy, judgy, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> it's really weird because we did like Big Bob Graham run recce, I think, the week before and he crushed it. But um, yeah, the Cleveland way. Oh, it's tired. A, yeah, probably so tired. But, yeah, I'd like to do it again and um, <laughs> get my badge. Get, get, get on that leaderboard. Well, I don't know about that. But, yeah, uh, thank you for the leaderboard. <laughs> I'll do it on a Saturday this time though, because I'm still on my lucky uh, pole gloves, actually. <laughs> I need to get some sorted out with some, some gloves. I'll be yeah. shopping on Saturday too. Cool. Right. We end every show with a quick five questions. One, two, three, four, five. We have got five. Okay. We've got so many dogs, Shelley. There's a sort of theme. Yeah, yeah. There's a sort of theme to the question. <laughs> so many dogs. It's probably hard to choose. But yeah, what is your favourite breed of dog? Um, now, it's definitely a Spaniel. I love a Spaniel. <laughs> Golden child. <laughs> I love a spaniel, but they are very smelly. Oh, she's not. Our men's lovely. Oh. Yeah. Are their ears not a big faff on, though, keeping their ears um, clean and stopping? Some of them are, but she's working breed. She's fine. Okay. Touch wood. I'm going to end up with a vet bill, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jinxed it now. Okay, right. So I've done the uh, letter run round. I'm going to come to your shop on a Saturday, and I come bearing cake. What cake would you oh. like me to bring? Ooh. A difficult one. Um, Rowan makes lemon drizzle cake, so I'm a bit of a fan of a lemon drizzle cake. Classic. I love a lemon drizzle. Okay. Yeah. Make a note of that. Any, anything, anything's appreciated. And so, <laughs> a, a lovely lady, Hannah, she came in the shop Saturday, bought chocolate cake. That was being shared around with the customers. Everyone's yes. having a lemon cake. <laughs> Great. I love it. Sounds like a really lovely community. Ah, uh, okay. We always like a little Netflix recommendation, Shelley. Is there anything you're watching on Netflix or Amazon? Any binge binge watching? No, um, I'm a bit rubbish with the telly thing. And since my daughter's away at college, I have let Netflix subscriptions um, <gasps> go. She what? is back in a couple of weeks time or next week. So I know Netflix is going back on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Do you not not watch any telly then, Shelley? Is it um, not? I'm a bit of a technophobe, thing, so I like channels one to four or one to five. Yeah. I'm there with you. Yeah. I do the same. I'm like, Bryn, let's just watch. Well, to me, it's like, let's just watch Grand Designs. Oh, I love Grand Designs. Yeah, Grand Designs. <laughs> you're safe, aren't you? You know you're in a safe pair of hands with Kevin. You know where you're going. You know what's going to happen. You know he's not really going to like it at the end. It's the same every week. Like... It's this couple who overstretch themselves to near disaster. And then it all comes good in the end. It's like, <laughs> that's the formula. And you always look at the house and go, I don't really like it after all that. <laughs> Three million pounds. Yeah and it's okay concrete yeah. there was a concrete one the other they didn't do they just left the inside like it was just a concrete shell and it even had like water dripping down the oh. inside still and they were like we love it and Bryn and I were like you can't you're lying <laughs> cannot still love that no <laughs> anyway we digress sorry Shelley what <laughs> what is yeah somebody comes in the shop to make a purchase what's the favorite thing what do you what do you like selling the most in the shop Oh, well, I always say I'm a rubbish businesswoman. So um, when people come in, I quite often tell them they don't need what they're coming for. <laughs> you got it all wrong, Shelley. <laughs> I know. So a lady came in Saturday um, on recommendation to purchase new shoes. She's had shoes about a month. And I was like, no, I just think you need to lace them differently. You don't need any new shoes. So. <laughs> but she will come back though when she needs new shoes. She knows she's not going to rip her off. I did say that to her. I said, but please come back when you do need new shoes. I said, but I don't think you need any. And then people come in for like knee supports and different bits and bobs. And I'm like, no, you need it fixed. That's just covering up. Yeah. But do you, with all these supports and inner souls, are you not just pushing a problem somewhere else? Yeah, that's what I think. I think it just needs, and if it's because you've got a race and you've literally just got that injury the days before and you and you're adamant you're doing your race fine but if it's like long term going on it needs to fix thing not covering yeah, up that's true i might just pop into the shop just to have a chat with shelly just like general <laughs> life guidance Guaranteed kick. do i really need this new thing my new smoothie maker shelly no eddie you're lazy face up to fat <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question. Every week we share the podcast over on Instagram and you get the choice for the Instagram story music, Shelley. It'll be left to 
one of us two if you don't come up with the goods. So, yeah, what's it going to be? Um, well, since I went to see Elton John on Saturday, oh. <laughs> maybe we should do something oh from Elton John. Elton John, John yes. yes. A bit of Rocket Man. Rocket yeah. Man. <laughs> okay. Rocket that would be a good one. Can we use that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, grandma's granny's not got Netflix. What on earth do you watch when you go to granny's what house? Do you watch? Nothing. I put you outside, don't I? Um, put... Do you ride the horses? Got the mowers and loads of dogs. Yeah, exactly. You don't, um, you don't really ride, do you? Daddy doesn't want you to ride horses because he doesn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> Do that on the QT, but maybe yeah. wait, look, we won't tell anybody. A little bit older. A week old, we had him on the back of a horse, me and Isla. <laughs> Took a cool. picture, showed them, he should have left his baby with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what grannies are for, all the inappropriate yeah. stuff. I love that. Oh, Shelley, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, especially when you're on child minding duties as well. You've done brilliant. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's brilliant sharing your wonderful story. And gosh, we now okay, we're going to be super tracking on Lakeland Hundred as well. <laughs> I think I'm not going to be at the competitive end of the field. Say so, you didn't want breakfast, okay? Yeah. Well, you didn't get it, did you, buddy? You asked about four times. So sorry. <laughs> no, just go for the finish and enjoy yeah, it. With your that's that's my plan. I think it's because I need to get my head back round. I've never not done all this. Yeah. In, just get back out there. Like, even having the kids and things, I still did, did ultra both years I had my kids so this is the longest time I've ever not done one before so I just need to get my head back around oh, fingers I think crossed that's a great idea fingers crossed yeah, we no see you on the start lane Shelley and uh, um, yeah see hello if you if you see me there too best of luck yeah <laughs> Thank <laughs> thanks you. for your time to do that. thank you take care bye bye Thank you so much, Shelley, for coming on the show, sharing your story and Tony's story. And I am absolutely sure that listening to that, it will have resonated with most people, um, some of the thoughts and some of the feelings. And we'll put a link in the show notes to perhaps some useful helplines that if you or you are concerned about somebody, you could uh, seek out for some help. And remember, it's always good to talk. Gary and I were talking, we were quite nervous before doing this interview, weren't we, Gary, about like yeah. sharing our emotions. Both of us like though we we chat quite freely about like our day-to-day -day life we don't delve into yeah. uh we don't share i mean i i'm very lucky in my husband in that i do he knows far too much about eddie but he doesn't i have to sometimes work quite hard to get him to share his how are you feeling and i think that's a man thing i think women are very good maybe when we're just more used to or we feel it more you like you can maybe express it a little bit easier in words as a woman uh and men there's a size would you say there's sort of like almost a barrier to i'm not really sure what it is i'm not comfortable myself talking about mm. those things i don't really chat about them too much with lisa unless she um is aware of maybe a dip in my mood but definitely with yeah. my with my friends it's not something that is on our kind of conversation uh list at all so it's super important we can share stuff like that on the podcast Yeah, look, he's back top of the charts again uh, on the Strava Club. Rafa's there with 191.5 miles. You know, we didn't see him last week because of Cape Wrath. Pretty sure with three of the runners there were doing Cape Wrath. So, yeah, yeah th that's why he didn't make the charts. Can we have a little meeting behind the scenes if we're going to mention Rafa next week? Let's... <laughs> <laughs> I did reach out to Rafa. I've screenshot our chat saying, do you know that we talk about you on our podcast every week? Because I thought, who is this guy? And he's like, I don't even know what your podcast is. <laughs> I was like, well, why have you joined the leaderboard? I think, like so I said, he's, he's on a, borrowed time. He's, he's on a borrowed. massive Strava fan. I saw. Oh, it's have you seen his emoji use? He's got lots of uh, clubs he's part of. Yeah, he anyway, we're an giving this guy far too much time. Like I always find if I go deep into Instagram and find I'm scrolling up that I'm like, oh, this is, what am I doing? Come on, there's more to life. I'm well, moving on. Uh, this, yeah. um, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Mugen, I, I'm sure that's not, not actually a real name, but Mugen yeah. C. Uh, he's based in Thailand, actually. So 
not too sure if that's any relevance to the name, but yeah, 33 hours of exercise. Oh my goodness me. I wonder again, he was, he was locked down, so I couldn't see what he was up to. And yeah, and I see how Drake up top of the elevation charts with just over 27,000 feet of elevation. I wonder how where... your knees, Howard, how are your yeah. knees? I wonder where he's been. I wonder if he's gone somewhere exotic to get those feet of elevation, but yeah, really impressive. Well done, everybody. Got to give a big shout out to Toby Stains. Now, his friend Katie Godfrey got in touch and Katie wrote on Saturday the 27th, I helped pace my friend Toby Stains to a successful Bob Graham round. I paced him from Wasdale to Littletown. That is a shift. So she's she's done all the hills and then um, left him with his vapor flies on for the last few miles <laughs> into the running. She still thinks they're still friends. After a few words of encouragement on Red Pike, we are both avid listeners to the show. And I know a mention of his epic achievement would mean a lot to him. We even quoted Eddie's no big decisions after a big race rule on Pillar when he threatened to hang up his shoes for good after this. What makes his achievement all the more impressive is that he lives in the flatlands of Hertfordshire. He absolutely smashed it and his team are very proud of him. Go Torbs. Oh my goodness. Well done, Torbs. And Eddie, um, pretty lame of me, actually. It's the anniversary of my Bob Graham round as we chat this. So yeah, it seems quite poignant. Well done, Toby. Great to see you rocking the classic pumpkin tea and trails hoodie too when you're finished. I love seeing that. And yeah. There's no other colour now. There's no other colour. We this you started is, the trend yeah. and it now it's like this is the season's colour. Bet that felt good putting on that hoodie. Probably felt quite good doing the Bob Graham round as well. Yeah. Wonder which one felt better putting the hoodie on. <laughs> awesome stuff, uh Toby. And well yeah, then. just like Katie said, to do that that kind of um route living in Hertfordshire that takes some dedication. I always think, you know, you can, we've mentioned this bazooki of the week, you can get on a treadmill and do the incline, but to get the quads conditioned mm, for the And the, the ankles downhills. and everything. Yes. Yeah. It's, and it's the rough ground, isn't it? Amazing. Uh, we've, got a, we've got another teeth from trails from Angela Green. After being super inspired by Emma on the pod, I dug out the spin infinity shoes I bought for a 27 mile recce from Coniston to Buttermere. I did this knowing I bought the wrong size and they'd crucified my feet even on a short run. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> Decided that perhaps they just needed breaking in and they'd be fine. Turns out they were not fine. And I was in agony by the top of Wellness Scar Road. And by the descent, I had my shoes off, threatening to walk back in my socks. Oh, wow. However, I'm not a quitter. So I loosened the laces and resigned myself to a painful day out when low and bef- behold, what do we find at Seathwaite? The Dudson Fell Race and the Peat Bland Van with just about every trail and fell shoot you could imagine. Pause. Can you imagine this? Pause the watch, tried loads on and skipped off in a pair of super comfy Scott RC2 and my feet were so happy. Excellent trainer choice there. Classic. Oh this is amazing. I gave the spin infinity to the lovely lady to take back to the shop in Kendall and I'll collect them. Bet you never do. Yeah. <laughs> Hand them on to somebody that will fit. Absolutely hilarious experience and a good lesson to always carry your credit card because you never know when you might find a pop-up trainer shop when you need it most. Also, trust your gut and don't wear shoes you know are the wrong size. Ooh. We've all been there. You so want... It's just like me in like skinny jeans. I so want them to look good and I keep thinking every time I put them on, I'm going to look like Abby Glancy and I never do. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to squeeze my feet in some shoes that I really wanted to be uh, rocking. But hell, good job Pete Bland was there with his pop-up shop. An excellent tip is to put Apple Pay on your phone, even if you never use it. Load a card onto your phone. That's what I have. Have you done that? So if you've no, have you got that? Do you do that? I'm I never use bit, it. I'm a bit just, I know I should use it to save my bacon in situations like this, but I'm really... I'm really pro cash. I think it's a worrying situation yeah, for society. Yeah, but you might not. This is not. This is not. This is just like if you know. Then you're always going to have your phone on you. You know, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, you've got your phone on you, Gary. Probably on camera mode, recording yourself. But if you've got, you know, then on Apple Pay, you've got, um, you've got some a way to either get yourself out of trouble, get in yeah. a taxi. You know, it's a really good idea to have it on your phone. Tap tip of the day. Who would like to win a Silver Trail Runner free ultra head torch? Yeah, I would. This is the head torch I had on my Bob Graham round. Pretty sure it's the same model. So that got me through the night. And yeah, I know 
the nights are short, but spoiler alert, I think in a few weeks' time, it'll stop getting, <laughs> it'll stop getting dark again. And all these races we enter, you know, like Little 100 for me, Dragon's Back Race, they all need a head torch as part of And I, the- I won't, don't skimp on your head torch because there's nothing worse than a crappy battery and having no head torch or having a crappy head torch yeah. um, that you can't actually see. To me, it was like my main bit of kit that I did the most practice and research with on the spine as we all know I had like the miner's lamp but I wouldn't if I did it again I would do it again do it again 100% well we're super lucky because not one but two silver head torches are up for grabs and uh, yeah all you need to do is be a part of the Tea and Trails Facebook group like and share the competition post and yeah come up with your instagram music choice so yeah if you were grilled by eddie and me and we asked you for your instagram story music choice what would it be and if you win we will put you on our stories with a picture of you with your head torch on whoa the dream not only the head torch but also being on the tea and trails instagram stories the stuff of the legends i love that maybe we should uh when we get our head torches gary we'll do our own instagram stories yeah. Flash that light. The time I might to have mine on this switch. weekend. I might take it for a spin. Uh, but yeah, two winners picked at random on the 19th and we'll announce the winners. I think I've got this correct. Episode 27. Jeez, you've done some good logistical planning there. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Guys, Gary is absolutely obsessed with the stats of this podcast and uh, it gives him nervous <laughs> anxiety if we like lose one listener a week. <laughs> he has charts, he has charts all over his bedroom, on the fridge. Uh, and the way that we move up the charts, I, again, I don't really understand this, but is by people liking the podcast and by leaving a review. So if you've got two minutes to spare, you're waiting at the bus stop, you're picking the kids up from swimming, you're procrastinating about your long run, perhaps you'd give us a little rating and leave a review and we love 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 reading them and uh we will we promise you we will read them out on the show as well no filter no filter as you know eddie no filter we'll read them out, so go wild go wild i love i love review if i get a notification there's a review come in it warms my heart if, to you. Oh, and if you don't know how to do a review, just pop over onto iTunes, isn't it? That's where you... Apple um, Podcast, yeah, iTunes, Apple Podcast. Apple Podcast, yeah. and then you can give some, give some stars. And yeah, thanks so much. Oh, Gary, help me. <laughs> yeah. Help me, Gary. <laughs> it's not long now, is it? The clock is ticking big time. <laughs> help me, Gary. Help, help me. Get- By the time you guys are listening to this, I will be installed at the Premier Inn Lodge. And, um, or maybe you're listening to it on your long run on the weekend. Maybe even passing me on the South End Swing going, Eddie does not look good. <laughs> oh, my God. But what does is, what, what is Taper look like for, you know, world class elite athlete world coach? Class elite athlete uh <laughs> i don't know who she is but for me um so yeah as i said i took a, i take out about 20 percent the two weeks before and then then i like a hard taper not doing very much because and i look at my lifestyle like if i was you know i didn't have a family i didn't have a job and i could sit around all day i'd probably do a little bit more running than i do this week but i try and fill up my bucket with energy and i also really find it helpful if i give myself the time to the headspace to so I st- actually started that last week go through the race go through the checkpoints in my head start the mental yeah. preparation start my fueling plan um I'm so lucky that I'm being crewed by um one of my longest clients um and he is on it he's on it it's brilliant um so he is going to he's even like He's like, shall I bring some tea bags for the finish? I'm like, oh, oh my God. He knows you well. Rehire, rehire. <laughs> um, and then I've got Sophie Power, who's another of my long-term athletes, and she's coming out from mile 50-ish to mile um, 70-ish. And then Trish, what a team. Uh, one of what, a team. what a team is coming to take over. She, I've made she said, I'll run like the marathon distance, but where you're allowed to change your paces, it doesn't quite split quite evenly. And Sophie's doing a mega day and she's actually going to run with me, run. <laughs> Hopefully, there will be a little bit of running. And then she's going to turn around and run some back. And so, Trish, I said, Trish, do you mind doing it's going to be closer to 30 miles to 25 miles? So she said, she could stretch to that for me. Wink emoji. So I'm <laughs> super stoked. I'm so lucky. I've never had a pacer in a race, so I don't know how that's going to work. Um, yeah, uh, but I, 
<laughs> no, but I pay someone and the feedback is it was a big help. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to be this because they're like, what do you want us, you know, what do you want us to do? What sort of pace? I'm like, just want you to bury me, basically. Just oh, keep wow. running <laughs> and I will just run behind you. There might, I guess, well, there'll be chat. Obviously, I can imagine with Trish, there'll be, blah, blah, she'll be, blah, 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 blah. you'll be grunting. And I'll just be grunting and silent. Uh, but I hope I, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm able to converse and I'm not really grumpy. And um, that's See, because always. it's not pasty pace, this race, is it? This is. It's quite we're a moving. quick one. We're yeah. moving and grooving. So I need them to push me and to be like, you can run up this. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of uh, grinders, as I call them, where <laughs> you've got to, you, in order to be competitive, you've got to be moving at pace uphill. You can't. It's not a coffee morning, Gary. So yeah. <laughs> we'll have some story. They'll have some stories. Eddie, do yourself proud. Don't let yourself down. <laughs> It's a good test, though. It really is a good test. When you've got to move, you can't hide hide behind the hills, you running. Can't, well, I certainly can't. People would be like, you live in the frigging Alps. Why are you walking? Get your butt cheeks up there. Um, so, yeah, what will be will be, though, wouldn't it? And I'm very, like, I, after the spine, the rest of this year is, I've, I've been so lucky that I've been able to put together a, you know, I would give that the training block. I've just done, like, eight out of ten. I've been really consistent. I've done everything really I could have done. So I'm really lucky that, especially as the recovery was so much longer than I thought be, to turn that around and come back and be stoked to stoke. I think being mentally stoked to do a race is massive because I know lots of people that have done the spine haven't even really started training again. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really lucky that I feel, um, yeah, that I'm mentally, I'm mentally up for it. It could all go, if it all goes horribly wrong, you know, it's 50 miles and I'm, well, you know, that's life, isn't it? You matter, put your, it? What do you do? You put your ticket in the bucket or what yeah. does, what do the kids say about football? You got to buy a ticket, get it in the mixer, get it in the mixer. <laughs> so, I'm going to buy a ticket. A See what, it's all good learning. And at the end of the day, Carrie, it's all good content for the podcast especially if it goes really wrong <laughs> um but yeah so this week a little bit's half an hour 40 minutes i'm gonna do some yoga later stretch it all out keep myself bendy um and unfortunately this weekend and in fact from like wednesday for 10 days it's like the busiest time for the kids oh. and poor Bryn is on i literally don't know how he's gonna how he's going to manage this weekend is mega. The kids are all doing big things all at different places. Um, and yeah, brings away a week. So it's just <laughs> going to be a, a flyby of me writing everything down. Um, and he'll, yeah, I feel. And then when I come back, I'm literally, you, I mean, you're leaving me. So Monday I'm doing like a whole day of work while you're skiving off somewhere. So I've got to be back on the mics. <laughs> Well, firstly, I don't know if I've shared this. I've got to get, a f I've booked my flight seven o'clock on Monday, Sunday, Sunday morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I've oh. got to finish because Evie's ballet show, her yearly ballet show is at lunchtime on um no it's five it's at five on sunday they've moved the time okay so oh. i i've got to try and be back for that i have said like it's a you know those easy jet flights are like 30 quid because i booked it so far in advance so if i miss it i miss it you know it's not okay. the end of, and i'll and i'll fly back on monday and i've said to eves mum might not make the show and she's like I don't mind because I'm just going to be dancing. Um, so she's cool. She's cool. And if I don't miss the flight, but if I if there's a chance I'll get that flight, I will literally finish Quick Cuppa and get on. Fingers the crossed. Train. Fingers crossed. But I kind of thought maybe as well that's good. Just don't sit down. Just get to the airport. Get the bag checked in. Get on the flight. Sleep on the flight. Drive back home and then collapse. Rather than when I did the autumn one hundred and I went back to hotel when I finished and slept for like an hour, then I had to repack and like get every. Uh, it was pretty rubbish. So almost it might be better not to sleep at all and just mo nothing can be as bad as Hadrian's Wall in the spine. Surely no. if I can do that. I can get on this flight anyway. So yeah, I've just got to organise this week and actually pack and lots going on at home as well. But maybe that'd be quite a good thing. It's going to take my mind off it easy jet pace <laughs> you've got to be <laughs> need the flight app on your on your phone <laughs> it might be delayed I'm going, you know. give, I'm going to give it to chris and go change the flight move it to two hours late <laughs> <laughs>
delay, delay, delay. Oh, and apologies if you are on apologies if you are on that flight, and I will probably won't have had a shower. Mom hopefully will have changed my pants. That was so. me in the cinema. My goodness, I must have. It was a red hot on Saturday, and I must have been pretty funky in Durham cinema. Did you take her like clean? Did Lisa have like a change? I had of some wipes and a towel, clean? yeah, and a change of clothes. I had me all kind of tops t shirt on again, heavy flex. Oh, wait, who were you hoping was going to see you in Durham <laughs> cinema in that t shirt? Yeah. <laughs> somebody know. might have. So somebody <laughs> in the know, little niche crimp community. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, best of luck. I'm going to be a little bit off grid, so I won't be. You're not going to watch. Apologies. Yeah, it was a surprise. I'll be on the on the start, (laughs) make the journey. But yeah, I'm uh, over in the lakes. Actually, going to do Bob Graham round leg one support on Friday night. A Um, proper support. A proper proper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friends doing it. Aaron. So best of luck, Aaron. If you're listening. (gasps) Best of luck, Aaron. I just hope the forecast isn't like it. Uh, oh, sorry, I hope the oh. weather isn't like it was last weekend because it was scorchy or over in the lakes. So yeah, good luck with that. And then it is, yeah, just a nice long weekend in the lakes, getting some miles in those legs and training for the week. Super simple. So yeah, be actually quite a big, big weekend. So I'll do my leg one support, finish that whatever time at night, and then I'll run back to uh, Keswick. So I won't do anything the Saturday because I will have done a little seven or eight mile run in the really early hours. So I won't do anything Saturday. It'll be good. Then I'll spend the time with the family. Sunday, do a run, but lots of... I want to do some summits with the kids, I think. I'd like to do that. Just some long hikes with loads of sandwiches and treats packed up. Oh, the dream, the dream. (laughs) But running wise, uh, three times eight minute hills and a threshold run. You know, I think you even said said the other uh, last week, maybe some hills like a, a tempo run and then a couple of long runs that is where i'm at next week and what i'm doing now now i can actually look ahead at lake 100 and dragon's back race and uh yeah so got big miles big hills this weekend how many weeks now to lakeland is it six seven seven weeks seven. i think it's seven unless i've got that yep. muddled up i think it's seven so yeah i need to basically only really got six more weeks of training then a taper and then yeah. a recovery Mm. And, I know it's terrible, isn't it? It's not great. But yeah, well, I've got a, at the end of June, we're going away to the lakes for a long weekend. So two big back-to-back days, two 30-mile days, I think, actually, on the Lake 100 course. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bob going around, obviously, this week. I think I might do the Let's Run round, which obviously Shelley guest knows quite a lot about. So I'm just trying to, not events, because events is a price to pay if you enter a physical race mentally and physically because i'll just invest too much in the day so just trying to think of big days out not necessarily driving over to the lakes uh stuff like that but yeah keeping it super super simple and i think you know looking back on my training it's kind of getting to the point now where it's too late to do anything drastically different i suppose but after it's all about consistency now and staying injury free isn't it like but don't we... do anything different don't do no. anything. it's working be, and I often think the best training is the most boring training. I think I've shown that in this South Downs Way block. It's like, just do the good the good stuff day in, day out. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be, a, you don't need to be a circus magician. You know, it doesn't have to be all bells and whistles. It's just... Um, well, I've been pretty consistent. I know, that I know we mock my unconventional approach to, to running but i'm pretty you're consistent very, you're very consistent <laughs> and when i tore the line so far it's gone well gone well pride comes before a fall gary let's not get too cocky on this podcast <laughs> <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, well that's enough banging on uh thanks for listening hopefully you enjoyed the show and if you did please take a look at Patreon. It really is the best way to support the show. Thanks to our partners and patrons, new and old, and be kind to your future self. And don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and share. Stay safe on the trails. Run wise, run well, and don't overdo it. Listen to your body as well as your favorite podcast. Make sure you refuel with lots of tea and gosh, maybe even some carrot cake. No carrot cake for me this week, but next week, boy, oh boy, am I going to indulge in those cakes and pancakes. Yummy. My name is Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Thwitz. And that was episode 25 of Tea and Trails. Mm-hmm.